Okay, so next up, I wanted to show you how we join the body onto the head. So I've got Mary here, you can see her little head, you can see the body extending down. And this is actually exactly the same for all the figures. So it's quite nice because once you've learned this technique, you're just going to use it over and over again. So let's put Mary to one side, get my nice red head from last time. Now, this is another form of netting and it's called tubular netting. So there's a little trick called a step up, which I'll explain to you in a bit. But we're going to get set up, first of all, with our little loops of beads. So we're going to start with just three beads in a loop. I'm actually going to use a contrast colour for my central bead, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm currently exiting from one of the ends of the loops on the head. My first stitch, I'm going to go into its next door neighbour bead and you want to pull that tight, make sure it hasn't twisted because if your thread twists you can end up with loops that sit round at an angle which you really don't want. So next stitch, same again, three beads and I've got my contrast in the middle. This time I'm going to miss out the next bead from the head and go through the one after. Again pull it up tight, make sure the loop hasn't twisted at all and we're just going to keep on doing that adding little groups of three beads. So the rest of the way around the head, each time you're going to be missing out one of the beads on the head as you add in your next set of body beads. So that's number four. We want six in total. So this is number five going in. Right, and number six. Now this is your final loop in a row. So we're about to come to that little step up I mentioned. So we're going to go through the last bead in the head. So that's actually the bead that you started this row from. So make sure you do that each time. That completes your row. Get that loop in place. Now the step up is just about getting ready to start the next row. So in this case, we're going to go through the beads in the first loop and exit from the middle bead. So that was bead number two. And now you can see why I've been using a contrast colour. So we've got another row with three beads. So this time you've picked up your three beads. You're going through the middle bead in your next loop. So using these contrast colours make it really, really easy to spot that. So carry on all the way around. Now for the little kings, I did actually use this contrasting pattern just because it gives them some sort of pattern and extra colour in their robes, which I thought being richer characters would be appropriate. But for the other characters, so Mary, Joseph and the Shepherds, I've actually made the bodies just using one colour of bead. Um, you might find that if you want to use the contrast colour because it helps you see what you're doing, that's absolutely fine. So you've got both options. And I've got to the end of the row. So again, be careful here. You want to finish off your existing row. So that's going through the bead that I started from originally. Then we're going to step up. So we're going through the first part of your first loop. Now, as you can see, we're getting a little bit of a tube here. If I carried on like this, we'd have a very straight tube, but I want to just increase slightly so we get a slightly wider body at this point. So imagine that's the shoulders we've done. So to do that, it's very simple. I'm just going to pick up five beads instead of three. So always for the netting, because you're going to be going through a middle bead, you need an odd number in each stitch, hence the increase from three to five. But again, I'm keeping my contrast bead in the middle. And you may have noticed that I just slipped through two beads instead of one. So that's another little thing to watch out for. You want to make sure you're literally just going through the central bead in your loop every time. So we'll carry on. Again, each row should have six individual stitches in it. So if you're worried about trying to spot where the end of the row is and when you need to do your step up, I've got a little trick that you can try. If you take out six little groups of five beads, then work from that little sets of six. You'll know when you've got to the end of the row. So this for me 
is stitch number six and I've got to look out for where I finish my row so go through the bead I started from mind the new loop doesn't catch over the old ones and then step up again until I'm exiting from the middle bead in the first loop on this row and that's it that's your entire technique for the body you're just going to keep on working that way until it's long enough I've just added one final row where I broke the netting rules and put in six beads in a stitch instead of five. That was just simply to give it a bit of shape at the bottom. But don't worry about the counts, it's all written in the pattern, so just read and follow as you go. And uh, yes, have fun making your characters.